Iron hard denim is an absolute pillar of the Japanese denim world. Sometimes polarizing, it is the gateway drug for many into the world of high-end selvage denim. And for just as many, it's the end point, the final destination. Now, I have four pairs myself, which you can see here. They're currently the only selvage denim that I own, and they are absolutely my favorite brand. But what is it really about Ironheart jeans that gets some people so inspired that they spend hundreds or even thousands on their collection while leaving others entirely uninspired and looking for something a bit more interesting. Now, it all started in 2002 after two decades of experience working in the Japanese garment industry. Shinichi Haraki founded the Works Incorporated, the manufacturer and parent company of the Ironheart brand. There was an immediate emphasis on a certain classic mid-century workwear aesthetic, right? Think Brando wearing a shop perfecto in the wild one. These were meant to be heavy, densely woven and substantive jeans that would, at least in theory, stand up to the rough and tumbles of the road. Many brands in the selvage space emphasize experimentation with fabrics, conjuring bizarre denim with a supernatural amount of slub, nep, or rainbow colors, glow-in-the-dark yarns, and so on and so forth. But Ironheart, on the other hand, is the other end of the spectrum. Thick, tough, and relatively simple and uniform denims. By and large, the thing that attracts most denim heads to the world of selvage denim is the fades. The way the fabric of your jeans takes on the character of your life and the way that you use them can be extremely satisfying to watch over time. The result of years of wear being a color and finish that is entirely unique to you. For many, getting those sick fades as fast and as painlessly as possible is the whole game. So much so that there is even an international competition, the Indigo Invitational, that seeks to find the most contrasty, most distinct, and all around coolest fades possible. While Iron Hearts are typically among the top brands submitted, they are generally known to be stubborn, slow to fade jeans. Personally, that was something that really appeals to me. You see, as much as I love a really cool honeycomb pattern or super high contrast whiskers, I also like how crisp and clean and frankly professional a brand new pair of Indigo Raws look. So for example, with the Indigo Blacks here, right? Now these are pretty, pretty new um, and we'll get some close-ups of this, I'm sure. But you have the Warp, which is an Indigo and the Weft, which is a black, which is why the exterior of the jean is that kind of really rich Indigo blue and the interior is actually that black color. And as the fabric starts to wear against itself and fade over time, you start to get these really high contrasty kind of fades coming out. Now, this being a newer pair, I think I've probably worn these for, you know, maybe a dozen times at most, you're just gonna start to see little suggestions of that fade coming in. But for something like the 14 ounce Indigos here, you can really see what it looks like when a pair of Iron Hearts really wakes up, right? in particular on the back of the legs. I mean, this is this is what we go in for, right? It's so sick, anyway. And then you can also highlight, I'm sure, my uh, relatively ugly cell phone fades in the pockets, which I'm sure people in the comments are already complaining about. Now, continuing here, we have the 18 ounce Overnight. Now, these are actually the oldest pair of Iron Hearts that I had. This was the first pair that I started with, which again, like when you're getting into selvage denim, especially heavyweight selvage denim, starting off at 14 ounces or at 18 ounces rather is, is kind of nuts. These were definitely a bit of a bear for me to break in initially because I just wasn't used to heavier denims. But as you can see over the last, I probably had these for about four years now, they've really gotten this nice kind of faded, dusty, contrasty look, which is, again, only gonna continue to get better with time. Circling back on my initial stated purpose of having jeans that go a really long time without fading and look really, really nice for, say, you know, professional or more dressy occasions, that's where the 14 ounce mad black comes in. Now, this pair of jeans is a bit of black magic, pun very much intended. You see, these jeans start out as a indigo dyed pair of jeans, much like the, the standard 14 ounce indigos, but 
they then are subjected to a double over dyeing practice of a couple of different types of black dyes, which unfortunately, despite our best efforts, we're not able to get much more information out of Ironheart than that. It's a trade secret of sorts, how they're able to get this kind of inky intensity of black out of these jeans. But the result is that you have a very, very slow to fade pair of jeans that in most lights looks black and in maybe direct sunlight, you get a little bit of that navy kind of hue that starts to come out, which just looks cool and dynamic. And even as these are starting to fade, these jeans are probably probably about uh, two years old at this point. You can see there's plenty of honeycombing happening on the back of the leg, but not very much in the way of actual fading, which works for me again, because these tend to be my dressier jeans. All of Ironheart's denim is samphorized, which means it goes through an initial washing uh, process to solidify the dyes and prevent dramatic shrinkage. Now, when it comes to actually getting your fades, right, the main things that I like to do, especially when the jeans are new, to really encourage that uh, high intensity kind of creasing in, in key areas is when I take them off, I will actually bunch them up in sort of a, a vertical stack getting that natural kind of uh, creasing that happens. And when I'm not wearing them, they kind of stay in that crumpled up little, little stack. And that really encourages that sort of natural folding that occurs in the whiskering you know, area on the front of the, the jeans and on the back of the legs. When I, you know, when I have to carry my dog out of, out of my building to, to walk him, I will usually go down on one knee to, to set him down on the ground. As a result, my right knee will usually have a little bit more fade on it than the left knee. In a very big way, what makes raw selvage denim so much fun and so special is it is a reflection of your lifestyle and the way that you wear your jeans and the way that you use them. That's kind of the whole point, you know? In terms of the actual dyeing process, at the baseline, the majority of Ironheart's uh, denim is dyed using synthetic indigo in the rope dyeing process. And what that results in is a very uniform and consistent kind of coloration throughout the fabric. Now, some of you may be watching this as first time selvage or iron heart buyers. So as a result, I'll, I'll go through quickly and run through some of the fits. The 634 is the straight leg with a medium rise and a very slight taper from the knee to the hem. The 1955 jeans are similar, higher rise with fuller thighs. My jeans are all, for the most part, the 777, which is the slim cut, slightly more tapered than the 666 or the devil's cut, which are kind of described more as a, a bit of a grown up slim cut. 555 is the super slim with a higher rise, and the 888 is the relaxed tapered cut. So also has a fairly high rise with roomy thighs and a taper from the knee to the hem. That's the fit that uh, Nick wears for reference, a man who is known for having thick, meaty, sumptuous thighs. <laughs> but with all of this having been said, why Ironheart specifically, right? Now, as much as I absolutely love Ewan McGregor's long way road trip miniseries, all about you know getting on motorcycles and taking incredible road trips and whatnot in exotic places, that's about as close to a motorcycle as I typically get. So what was it that drew me to Ironheart in the first place? Well, simply put, it was the quality. You see, Ironheart's denim is known for being extremely uniform in the way that it's woven. While again, some feel that results in uninteresting fades. I mean, I don't know. You tell me. That doesn't look like terribly boring fades to me, but what do I know? The classic but never gimmicky styling of the brand with little touches of heritage flair. The benefit of that uniformity in the way the fabric itself is made is an extremely smooth and dare I say comfortable raw denim. Yeah, I did say comfortable raw denim. The very phrase seems like an oxymoron, but truly that is the case with most of the iron hearts that I have owned. Now, don't get me wrong. The heavy stuff, the 21 or the 25 ounce jeans are an absolute beast to break in. They are stiff and be a bit abrasive. Honestly, the first three days walking around in the 25 ounce extra heavies actually resulted in some pretty good bruising. Um, but by contrast, the 14 ounce and to a certain degree, the 18 ounce pairs feel incredible and dare I say even luxurious when they're new. When I'm spending three or even $400 on a pair of jeans, I want them to feel fancy, goddammit. 
And Iron Hearts, with their hidden rivets, distinct yet classic red selvage ID, beautiful leather patches, uniform stitching throughout, the you know contrasting colors there. There's enough attention to detail throughout that it's really the sort of you know fine, lovely detailed stuff that I'm a real sucker for, right? So, with all that said, moving on to some pros and cons of Ironheart jeans. First and foremost, that smooth, uniform fabric is luxurious, and despite being a bit stiff when new, like all raws should be, they seldom feel outright abrasive. Also, in a pro, they're slow to fade, resulting in a greater longevity for the jeans. Talking again about the quality, it's just beautiful throughout. These are absolutely wonderfully made, traditional jeans with excellent kind of classic traditional craftsmanship, which I'm a total sucker for. Finally, the leather patches are cool. This one's got a rat rod on it for crying out loud. Like, come on, it's sick, I love it. <laughs> As well, there's pretty minimal branding throughout. They're really the only thing that gives it away is the little red W for works on the back pocket, which again, I kind of dig. I think it's like a subtle little nod to the brand, which, you know, I like. Moving on to the cons. Again, they're slow to fade, which, yep, that's also a con depending on what your priority is. You want something that will look like a classic pair of old thrift store jeans in like six months, you're best to probably keep looking, right? Also, they're hard to find. With only a few brick and mortar retailers in the US that actually carry Iron Hearts, these can be really tough to find and actually try on for sizing, which is hands down the hardest part of actually buying selvage denim. Now, far and away the biggest con is the goddamn pocket bags. <sighs> Where do I even start? This is the number one thing with, with pretty much every jean, but Iron Heart is certainly a, a, a major offender here. The pocket bags wear out before you will ever get a crotch blowout or even fray, you know, a hem or something like that. Like if you're carrying around any amount of stuff in your pockets, your phone, uh, a pocket knife, your wallet, whatever, eventually you're gonna get holes in the pockets. And a lot of repair places don't like to touch pocket bags because it's a pain in the ass. So what you result in are these weird Franken pockets, right, that are all stitched up and stupid because otherwise all my stuff's gonna fall out. And it's just dumb. I mean, it's soft fabric, it's really nice. It feels comfortable on, it doesn't get all bunchy and stuff, but like, what are we doing here? Come on, these are way too expensive for the pocket bags to wear out this fast. Rewind it back to when I did the review of, uh, of uh, Filson's jeans, where they had the reinforced pocket bags. So what Filson has done here is actually given you a reinforcement of an extra layer of this kind of canvas material on the inside of the pocket bag. Just do that, everyone, just go do that. Ugh. Finally, uniformity in the overall weave and manufacturing means that you aren't gonna get a huge amount of variety from pair to pair. This is gonna be a pro or a con, again, depending on what your priority is. For me, that's something I actually really like, but for a lot of people, it's uninspiring. So again, your mileage may vary, but for me, I actually quite like that. Personally, the whole point of delving into the often tedious and wildly impractical realm of Japanese selvage denim was to get a high quality investment piece that would evolve and develop character as they accompany me throughout my life. And once they're faded and worn through with blowouts and frayed seams, well, I'll just go get them repaired and keep on wearing them, right? The truth of the matter is, as great as a pair of jeans with sick fades are, if they don't feel great, and I mean really, really great, like that broken in, custom made, second skin kind of great, then it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Of all the denim that I've personally handled, Ironheart just checks all those boxes. You know, they're beautifully made, look and feel great the day they're brand new, and only get better from there. And at the end of the day, what more could I really want? That does it for my review of my personal Ironheart collection and sort of overview of the brand. I'm sure that the comments section will be somewhat lively as anytime you talk about selvage denim it gets uh, it gets interesting to say the least but what do you guys think you know are you a part of the iron heart army are you a total sucker for these are you drinking the kool-aid like i am or does it bore you do you want something that is you know much more knotted and slubby and crazy looking 
Let us know in the comments below. Please make sure to like and subscribe and uh, we'll come back at you with some more cool videos on, on jeans and boots and denims and bags and jackets. Coming soon.